Kilo Volt Bikes, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, we've got the LTZ build part two, and we're gonna actually do some stuff. A lot of you were saying, that last video was like an advert, it was too short, we didn't do enough stuff. It's called conceptual science. We have to think about what we do before we do it. That's how the stuff comes out so good. Check the chain line, bro. I, I, I'm not even mad at that chain line, bro. Oh, that'll be all right. No, actually, not. I thought it was going to be all right for the stealth shot. But it's no good for the stealth shot. Come on. Oh my good lord, bare nuts and bolts here. Sorry for CRF. You're going to have to find some new bolts, mate, because you just got jacked. You just got jacked, mate. Huh? CRF? Whose is it? Mine, so really I've just made my own life harder, but it's one of them. It is, but it's like one of them things I'll, I'll, delay, I'll delay a headache. 
till later. It's a delayed headache. So on further inspection, I've realized that there's things like all these wires here, if we come around this side. We've got this ignition coil here. We've got things like starter relay. All of this stuff's got to come off now. So we're going to get all this stuff off because we're obviously not going to use it.
additional wiring is off, I thought it's a good time for us to tackle the running gear. So in order for us to make all of this stuff work, I've come up with a perfect gear ratio. I'm not gonna share with you exactly right now what that perfect gear ratio is, but it does require us to have a custom rear sprocket produced. So in order to do that, we need to get the original rear sprocket off, just so we can get some measurements of how it lines up with the original quad sprocket carrier. So in order to get this sprocket off on this quad, we need to get the wheel off and pull it off that way. So I'm gonna loosen the sprocket first, take the wheel off, and then we're gonna bang the, bang the sprocket off. So now we've got the sprocket removed, we've got all the additional wiring, I'm just going to grab that quickly and show you, this is all the unneeded wiring that the original petrol quad required, we've got a starter relay, a, a switch gear, a display, some, a stop, a stop, a, an ignition coil, all kinds of other little bits, this is like a CBI or something, all this stuff we don't need, so we're going to stick this in a box. This sprocket is so we can make the custom sprocket to a gear ratio that we need. Now we need to start thinking about the power source. Now if you remember in part one I did show you the go-kart battery. Um, we're still 50-50 whether we're going to use that exact battery there and them exact cells there. What kind of juju? In there. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> I know Juju is this, the bolt just fell out of the sky. Right, so, we're still 50-50, whether or not we're gonna use the go-kart battery, as in use them exact cells there, or if we're gonna reorder some more. The only reason I'm tempted to is because it's there. The only reason I'm tempted against is because we've got some go-kart content to show you, and it could be quite useful in skyrocketing the go-kart. So either which way, we're gonna use EIG cells. Use it. Um, and I know we promised to try and stop using cardboard aided design. One second, let me just take the address of this one. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yo, are you super fans turning up at your house? This is bad. This is bad, man. What's that? 666. Six. Oh, you bumper cart lane. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh.
that I'm precise in my spraying, bro. That precision spraying. Oh, professional job, that. Sick boy stuff. Look at that. So I know we promised to stop using cardboard aided design to help the trees. Unfortunately, we turned our main computer into a simulator, so we tend to be doing more driving than designing. So just this once, we're gonna have to sacrifice a few trees to make it happen. This is the exact size of enclosure required for us to house 40 EIG cells. This is gonna result in a 72 volt 40 AH pack with a 400 amp discharge rate. So, as you can probably see, or as you're about to see, that fits in there either like so, which is sideways, it's still nice and snug in the frame, it can sit there like that. I like this way, or we can fit it in a little bit hard, a little bit more of a techers fit, but it still does go. Stood up like that. Something like that, something like that. It doesn't encroach a little bit on where the fuel tank will be, but it doesn't need to hold any fuel, so feel all about that. Mm. You guys, in the comments, let us know, should we have the battery like this, or should we have it laying down, get this back out again, or should we have it laying down like so? Oh, I've kind of made it a bit smaller, the box, but it's all right, you get the general gist of it. So sideways or standing up. I think sideways is going to win. That's going to look kind of nice when it's all enclosed with all the panels and everything. So, oh, you know what? To stop, look, I was just about. Whoa! <laughs> I was going to say I was just about to roll off like my foot on the brake. I took my foot off the brake. Whoa! Right. It's good to know the brakes work. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Killer Volt Bikes. If you liked today's video, please subscribe. We're going to be back with some more content. We've got some go-kart stuff to show you. We've still got new projects to show you guys. This isn't the only project we're working on right now. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked today's video, please subscribe. We'll be back. We'll be back very soon with more content on the go-kart, more content on this quad, and we're going to show you some more projects we've been working on.